Live with Newt. Didn't like Newt because he cut them off from their earmarks. He cut them off from their pork barrel politics. Even, I'm talking about Republicans here. I'm sorry yes. to have to cut you off. We've got to go to the Ron Paul speech right now. Rick Tyler, thanks for joining us. Ron Paul speaking right now. Of 37 delegates have been chosen so far. Less than 2%, like 1.5%. This is the beginning of a long, hard slog. And we will, con we will continue to do this. There is no doubt about it. The message of liberty is being received by more people every single day. Thanks to your effort. The wonderful thing about the message of liberty is if what we seek is peace and prosperity, that is how you get peace and prosperity, by understanding and defending and promoting the cause of liberty. You know, there's no doubt our numbers have been growing, whether it's if this primary, but I've been in this business of promoting this cause in the electoral process for a long time. At the beginning, I thought it was just going to be promotion of a cause. Then it dawned on me, if you win elections and win delegates, that's the way you promote a cause. <laughs> So we will certainly be promoting this in the most frugal way. We will be going to the caucus station uh, states and we will be promoting the whole idea of getting more delegates because that's the name of the game and we will pursue it. Twenty or thirty years ago, I started, and I didn't think it, it would be well received. And obviously, uh, getting elected twelve times meant the people who knew me best voted for the cause of liberty, and this cause has continued to grow. Even compared to four years ago, it looks like tonight we will get four to five times more votes than we did four years ago. So there's every reason to be encouraged, there's every reason that we understand so clearly that the cause is so necessary. This is what I noticed about four years ago. After the last election, uh, our efforts were getting, it, they were getting more and more attention. And everybody asked me, the media queens asked me, what, what, what is different? Well, the evidence has become clear that the efforts by government is failing and we can't depend on the government to take care of us from cradle to grave. We can't depend depend on the government's on its efforts to promote and, and believe that we can police the world and go into nation building because we're all gone broke. a lot about the economy and how we got into the mess and what we should do about it. Others have talked about it in glib terms and, and not be specific, but I see our problems as a spending problem. Government is too big. We do more things, all the things we're not supposed to do, and we forget about doing the things we're supposed to be doing. So, as a modest attempt to get back to reasonable budgets, we want to have a $1 trillion cut in spending in one year. Of course, there's not, there is one other little item that I've talked about, not for this campaign, not for the last campaign, but for the last 30 years. Matter of fact, it motivated me in many ways to run for, run for Congress. And then it has to do with how do we get away with paying for these bills and endless spending occurs and government keeps growing. It cannot occur if you have a sound monetary system. That is why I have emphasized the, the importance of having a sound dollar and why we need to rein in the Federal Reserve System.
phrase that they, uh, you know, pose against us for talking about the gold standard is they said it's too complex and it's risky business. So what, what is, what can be more ridiculous than saying, oh, money comes out of a printing press and it should be done in secret, creating trillions of dollars and passing them out to the special interest, and we're supposed to accept that as a good monetary system? We know you know, it isn't all that complex. Matter of fact, if we obeyed the law, we would have sound money. The Constitution still says that only gold and silver should be legal tender. And this, you can understand why government grows, because politicians don't have to be responsible. There's various reasons why they spend money, but if they, you know, to one degree they can tax us, but there's a limit to, to how, long, how much, because there'll be a tax rebellion. And uh, they can borrow, and they can get away with that as long as the credit's good, but eventually interest rates go up. That's why they invented in 1913 this uh, financial system based on, on fiat money and printing money, because you can delay the pain and penalty. And I used to say so often over the years that, you know, we run up these debts and we pass them on to the next generation. We shouldn't do it. But you know what? What's different today? We are the next generation and we're suffering that that we cannot uh, resolve the problem of the un, uh, unfinanced uh, entitlement system, Social Security and all, because if you just print money, the value of the money goes down and the people's standards go down. Already the people on fixed incomes, their standard of living is going down. The middle class is shrinking. Unemployment, if you look at those honestly, is closer to 20%, and the people are very, very concerned about this. The answers come with a very uncomplicated solution. We got into this mess, like too many people in, the, in Washington either didn't care or didn't understand the Constitution. We need to restore the Constitution and we will restore liberty. In order, in order to do that, we should uh, spend all our resources here at home. That's a good place to spend the money. This is also the reason I have emphasized so strongly about the waste and the amount of money we spend overseas and the foreign aid. At the same time, our people are suffering here at home. So if we want to spend the money, we should work hard to return the money from overseas spending to the people here in this country, and they should spend the money. But in order to do this, we all it is not so simple. You don't wave a wand. You have to change the people's attitude. That is what's happening. The people's attitudes are changing and they're realizing that we can't afford this any longer. Even the people who are on the receiving end know they're getting into trouble because the producers have been pushed out of our country. So this this is becoming the opportunity for us to restore the values that have married, made America great. It is based on individual liberty. It's based on the concept that we are free people with free spirits. We should have control of our lives and we should have a control of our destiny, but we also should have control of our money as well. Because government does reflect the prevailing attitudes of the people. Where we are gaining now is the prevailing attitude of the people uh, is changing, and that is very good because it's coming our way and saying government is the problem, it is not the solution. We got our mess, we got into this mess by too much spending and too much debt and too much printing money and too much regulation. How do they think they're going to get out of this mess? By spending more money, printing more money, borrowing more money, and regulating more. It's impossible. That is why we have to reverse the course. In foreign policy, we need a foreign policy, not so strange, but one that the founders gave us, one the Constitution designed. One that is designed to operate in our self-interest and for our national security. That's the kind of going into these wars and never seem to end, that uh, they never seem to stop, and we never know why we're there and what the purpose is. The founders gave us the answer. Don't go to war unless the war is declared. Go to war when they go home. So that's a good
place to start, bring the troops home, and have them spend their money here, not, not overseas. Entitlement system, it doesn't work. It's all well intended. Oh, yes, everybody's going to get a house, and everybody's going to get free health care, everybody's going to get a free education, and look at what we have. All it does is when you pump more money into any area, you get higher prices. So the more the government pumps money into, into education or medicine, the costs go up. But you don't get higher quality or better distribution. Unfortunately, our country has been very lackadaisical, and this is what we're reviving, and that is we're lackadaisical about our understanding and our trust in freedom. This is what we need. We need to restore the confidence that if we want a free and prosperous society, we have to understand the necessity of assuming responsibility for ourselves. Of course, the, the one other area that bothers me significantly is when we accept the big role, the role of big government in economics or in overseas. Inevitably, it undermines our personal liberties, and it is, and, and that is being attacked now, always with well, you know, good intention. But in the last 10 or 12 years, we have embarked in, in a, on, on, a, on a road that is undermining our liberties. When you think of the harm done and the threat to our privacy with the Patriot Act. That has literally canceled out the Fourth Amendment. We need to we we need to reverse that and get rid of the Patriot Act. Is what I think we should do. One one place where when the people spoke out, we achieved a lot. And there are a few people in this room. I'm quite sure are are uh, computer savvy and internet savvy. And when they threatened with stop uh, online gambling, you know, act which was to take over the internet, guess what? You all spoke out, and, and at least temporarily, it has been removed from the docket in Washington, both in the House and the Senate. So that is an achievement. When the people speak out, you can get their attention. But we also need to continue to speak out against what that, that paragraph they put in the National Defense Authorization Act. That provision that now allows our president to use our military to arrest American citizens with no charges and no awareness. Now I got a little bit of criticism from the media and I really worry a lot about that. <laughs> I took a day this week and went back up to Washington. I voted to make sure that I was on record to vote against increasing the national debt by $1.2 trillion. But also, while there, I dropped a piece of legislation in that I think is very significant, and I hope we gain the momentum because so many people in the campaign has been aware of this, although it's not not uh, no noticed much in the, in the mainstream media. And that is, I introduced a bill to repeal that provision and remove that power from our president. right cause because it's the cause that made America great. Freedom is the answer to so many of our problems. If you think about diversity in a country as our country is, freedom brings people together. Because what we do is we release the creative energy of each individual to pursue their life as they choose. Their lifestyles, their religious values, their personal values will be determined by that individual as long as they don't interfere with others. This brings people together. Economically, it should be the same issue, social issues and economic issues. You should have not only the right to your life and your own, uh, your own practices, but you should have a right to spend your money as you choose. This is what we have to do. And we did have the best experiment ever. We were the richest country ever. We had the largest middle class ever. And now it is changing. And it's been systematically changing over quite a few decades. So it, we have to reverse that because right now the middle class is shrinking, the country is poorer, and the prosperity we have is basically based on debt. We owe so much money to overseas. We are, have now, I mean, ironically and unfortunately, the Chinese have become our banker. I mean, what is going on with us? Why don't we produce the conditions and the environment to invite capital and investments back into this country. That's what we need.
The issues you all know very well. The country is coming our way. This campaign has a long way to go. The momentum is growing. The one thing we can say about our campaign, have you ever noticed other candidates going up and then down, up and then down? So far, I am very proud to say that our efforts is steady growth. It's steady growth like this. what is necessary. It, there is a great need for it and the opportunity is there. And let me tell you how proud I am of all the supporters and all the efforts made uh, in, in this. And uh, just believe me, thank you very much. Keep up the good work. We have the message. We have the talent. We have the determination. And we will win this battle for peace and prosperity. Thank you. Ron Paul speaking tonight at his campaign headquarters in South Carolina.